there are many parallels between fatal pilot errors and what can go wrong in the cardiac cath lab. I'd like you to listen very carefully to the audio of this flight in distress. Center Alaska 261, we are in a dive here. Alaska 261, say again. Circle pitch. Alaska 261, say again, sir. Yeah, we're at a 26,000 feet. We are in a vertical dive. Not a dive yet, but uh, we've lost vertical control of our airplane. Alaska 261, Roger. We're at 23.7, request. Uh, yeah, we got it back under control there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Last 261, uh, say the oxygen you'd like to uh, remain at. Last 261, say your condition. 261, we're at 24,000 feet, kind of stabilized. We're slowing here, and uh, we're going to uh, do a little troubleshooting. Can you give me a block between uh, 20 and 25? Hi, Zero Delta Secretary, that plane has just started to do a big, huge plunge. A big, huge plunge, uh, thank you. Skywest 5154, the MD-80 is uh, one becoming about 2 o'clock, about 10 miles. Now, another pilot reports he's really looking pretty bad. They're heading to your right. Do you see him? Yes, sir. Uh, I concur. He is uh, definitely in a nose down uh, position descending quite rapidly. Okay, very good. Keep your eye on him. Alaska 261, are you here with us yet, sir? American 161, you can proceed direct to Denny now. Okay, very good. It looks like he's turning uh, turning over in front of you now, Skylar 5154. You still got your eyes on him, sir? There is a uh, definitely out of control. Okay, very good. Yeah, he's inverted. He's, okay. Uh, just do what you need to do there, Skylar 5154. Keep us advised. As you listen to this terrible sequence of events, you are likely astounded, as I am, by how calm everybody has remained. The air traffic control and the other pilots communicate with each other, as does the pilot, to try to salvage the situation. It turns out that in this case, the tragedy was caused by a faulty horizontal stabilizer. The pilot had to fly the craft upside down for a significant portion of time trying to save the situation. There's a lot to be said for calmness while you try to clear your thinking and solve the problems. Here we're going to watch a military Boeing take off. A number of factors including pilot overconfidence will play a role in what happens next. The craft here is seen to climb steeply, bank aggressively leftward. Here the craft straightens out as we might expect, but then here the pilot performs an aggressive rightward bank does not pay heed to the stall alarms and you will momentarily see the craft begin to stall and it is too late. This Boeing 747 cargo plane carries a significantly heavy load which has not been secured and as it shifts it actually damages some of the hydraulic controls of the craft. The craft can be seen to be pitching abnormally here, rolling and stalling and it is too late to control it. In this case 
at least one bad decision or precaution led to this catastrophe. In this example, the two-engine craft that you see suffers from a single-engine failure. But in response to that emergency, the pilots turn off the incorrect engine, thus completely losing power. They do attempt a restart, but it is too late. There are many parallels between aviation and the cardiac cath lab, and the following factors can lead to bad outcomes. Inadequate training or mentorship, operator overconfidence, the lack of situational awareness, denial that something is not right, feeling helplessness during a disaster, and miscommunication. In the following Airbus crash, there were a number of factors in play. First, there was pilot overconfidence. During landing, the pilots ignored technical issues that had arisen. They had far too much altitude and thought they could get away with it during landing. And while doing all this, they were talking about the coronavirus instead of focusing on the job at hand. Almost 100 people died. Here are some more parallels. Flying in bad weather is like performing a high-risk intervention. Just like wind conditions or bad visibility can be deadly in flight, patient frailty, low ejection fraction, and other comorbidities, as well as coronary anatomy factors can worsen the outcome. Therefore, you have to go into these cases with your eyes open. Checklists are very common in aviation, and you have to do the same in the cardiac cath lab. When something goes wrong, will you be subject to amygdala hijack, or will you be calm enough and refer to your checklist to organize your thinking and your plan? Denial can be fatal, not noticing that something is wrong, Something does not look right on the angiogram, or you have damping, low blood pressure, and not accepting that that is the case. Pilots must have situational awareness. They know where the rest of the local traffic is. They know their altitude, the condition of their plane, how much fuel they have. Similarly, in the lab, you have to be aware of what the threats are. How is your patient doing? How is your anticoagulation? How is the rhythm? As is the case with aviation, similarly in the cardiac cath lab, it is very rarely one single issue that derails a case and leads to a bad outcome. Communicate clearly, do not assume all is going to go well, and take the procedure as it comes with great caution.